Okay, hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at outcome R11, and it's graphing reciprocal functions. And if you recall what a reciprocal is, it's, let's say, for instance, if I have a number uh, 2, the reciprocal of that is going to be 1 half, and the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. And uh, we're going to be dealing with functions of that type. So you're going to find this in 7.4 of your textbook. And again, I have uh, some key terms listed. A reciprocal function, asymptote, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, invariant points, and the term approaching the x or y intercepts are all words that you're going to need to familiarize yourself with. Okay, so our first thing here is, uh, well, the question says sketch f of x equals x and g of x equals 1 over x. And we're going to do that in just a second. Uh, and just make sure that you note that g of x is equal to 1 over f of x. So these two are reciprocals. Now, uh, a line that a curve approaches but never touches is called an asymptote. And the way that this looks on a graph is it's a dotted line. If it's going like this up and down, then we call that a vertical asymptote. And I'll just use the letters VA to represent that. And if it goes across like this, then it's a horizontal asymptote. So we'll call it HA. Uh, and now the way we find this is... Um, like, for instance, if we have 1 over x, uh, we note that what number can this function never be? I can never put in an x value because that would result in a uh, undefined function. Uh, and then if we look at points that remain unchanged through a transformation, those are called an invariant point. So invariant. So that means they are they do not vary invariant points. And for our purposes here, uh, that is when y is equal to 1 or when y is equal to negative 1. I've got this chart here um, and I'm going to look at this chart after we've actually graphed our function. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to graph y equals x and y equals um, actually the reciprocal of y equals x. So let's first graph y equals x and we all know that that looks like this line right here going straight across diagonally. Okay, you don't even need a table of values for that anymore. So you might grab anything I have for a ruler because I don't always have a ruler on hand. So I've got my tin card. I can't find my other ID card right now. Well, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so this is uh, y equals, actually here I'll call it f of x equals x. And then the next thing I'm going to graph is 1 over x. So we're, we'll call it g of x is 1 over x. And the easiest way to do that is just to do a quick table of values. So let's get a few numbers. Um, and the numbers that I'm going to use, uh, let's start with negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. I'm going to throw in a negative 1 half in there, 0, positive 1 half, 1, 2, 3, and I'm running off the page. Okay, so you got a table of values there. Let's put in our, so this is x, this we'll call it f of x, which was equal to x. So it, the numbers don't change for that, right? They're pretty much, well, they're, they're exactly the same. There's no change. Because whatever x value I'm putting in, I'm getting out that x as my uh, range values, 2 and 3. Okay, now this is where the changes happen. So for this, I'll do 1 over x. So now whenever I have a number x here, to get 1 over x, well, it's just 1 over that x value. So negative a quarter, negative a third, negative a half, uh, and now notice what happens here at this point is, well, it's negative 1 over 1, which is equal to negative 1. Um, right here, this one changes to negative 2. And 0 stays as 0. 
And uh, let's see, what else do we have here? This becomes 2, 1, uh, 1 half, 1 third. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to take these points here, these guys, and plot them on this graph. So move it back up. And at x equals 1, see, I had, oh, that equals 1. So this is going to be the same for uh, my f of x and my g of x. So you know what? I'll put an x there just so that I know that I've plotted it. And uh, let's see. For x equals 1 half, I got 2. x equals 1 third, I got 3. x equals uh, 1 fourth, I would get 4. And then for x equals 2, I get 1 half. x equals 3, I get 1 third x equals 4. Okay, so you see here I get a nice kind of curve of dots. Now when you're drawing these, make sure you have a nice curve, okay, and it's it approaches the x-axis right here. It gets closer and closer but never touches. And up here on the y-axis it gets closer and closer and never touches. And when you're drawing these make sure you draw them so that they're going towards and they don't like curl back out. So make sure they stay nice like that. And then you're going to see that the same pattern happens over here on this side. Uh, I end up with this being negative 2, this going close to a third, negative, the, this goes to negative a quarter, and I end up with my same point there. Negative 1 and negative 1 don't change. Uh, here I get negative a half. Here I get negative a third, negative a quarter. So we have a similar, well, the same shape on this side. Okay. And we want to draw arrowheads on those sides. And okay, so let's see. That looks pretty good, hey? All right, now, um, a thing that you want to note right here is what value, what value can you never end up here? Well, I can never have, I can never have x equal to 0 because then it would end up with 1 over 0 and that's bad, right? Okay, so we're going to call that x equals 0, we're going to call that an asymptote. And in order to indicate an asymptote, I'm going to draw a dotted line along that vertical space. And if it's on the axis, extend it beyond. And I'm going to do the same thing here for y because uh, it's impossible for us to get y equals 0 out of this function. You just, you can't find a number to put in there. So you want to draw that as that. Now, this straight line here, that's not our 1 over x function. It's this, it's these two curved lines that is our uh, g of x equals 1 over x, okay? And when you're doing these, you want to make sure that you label at least one point on each arm, okay? So we're going to label this 1, comma, 1, and label this down here, negative 1, comma, negative 1, okay? All right. Now, uh, let's consider this function here, so f of x equals 2x plus 5. So your first goal, uh, the first thing you should do is just graph 2x plus 5. And that's easy. We learned how to do that last year, right? So you start with your y-intercept of 5 and then run your slope up or run it down the other way. And the slope is 2 over 1. So get your handy-dandy ruler and extend it beyond. Make sure you have arrowheads on there. So this is 2x plus 5, okay? And it asks for y equals f of, sorry, y equals 1 over f of x. Okay, so what does that actually look like here? Well, um, y equals 1 over f of x. So the graph the function that I want to graph, uh, oh wait, is, sorry, 1 over 2x plus 5. This is what we're actually going to graph, and I'll graph it in red. Same rules apply here, um, but I'm not going to do it with a table of values this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, important key points, and 
an important key point is, well, if I look at this part right here, uh, what do I notice would be a restriction? Uh, so we can never have a denominator of 0. What value of x is going to make that 0? So you want to figure out 0 equals 2x plus 5, and that's going to be our asymptote. Okay, uh, so that's going to be x can never be, so our asymptote's going to be at x equals negative 5 over 2. Okay, so find that. And oh, here, look, it's just at your x-intercept on this graph anyways. So take that and draw a vertical line, dotted, okay, going all the way up. Okay, so your vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 5 over 2. Okay, so now that we have our vertical asymptote drawn, uh, we want to figure out where our invariant points are going to be. And our invariant points are going to be when, when y equals 1, or y equals negative 1. And to figure out those, well, if you if you just actually look at the graph, you're going to notice right here, well, this is where y equals 1. And if you just kind of run across horizontally, you're going to notice right here, that's where it's going to, it's going to intersect with this original line that we have, right? So that's going to be an invariant point. Well, what is that value going to be? Hmm, I'm going to guess that it's negative 2. Okay, so when y equals 1, what does my x become? I should make that plus, and then, so here we have negative 4 equals 2x, x equals negative 2. Hey, my guess was right. How exciting. Um, now, any wild guesses what the other invariant point is going to be when y equals negative 1? Hmm, it's going to be x equals negative 3. So that's an invariant point. Now, I'm going to put an x there so that we know that it's important and uh, exciting. Uh, so from there, I'm going to take this and I'm going to just I'm just going to regenerate that shape that we had before. So I'm going to draw a line that curves towards my asymptote really carefully, and I'm never going to touch it. And then I'm going to put an arrowhead on it. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay. So, and notice if this number, this here on my original graph was 5. So what's going to be our new y-intercept over here? What's the reciprocal of 5? Hmm, 1 over 5. So that's going to be right there. And that's going to cross through, and it's going to go, and it's going to go really close, but it's not going to touch, and it's not going to curl back either. So make sure you're careful when you're drawing these. And I'll just uh, mimic that shape over here. Okay. So this is our y-intercept right here now. So that's when x is 0, y is equal to 1 fifth. And my uh, invariant point right here is going to be negative 2 comma 1. And over here, my invariant point is going to be negative 1 comma negative 3. Okay, so there is your graph of the reciprocal function in red. You need to make sure that you have your horizontal, uh, sorry, your vertical asymptote. Uh, your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. Um, and that's obvious why. Uh, let's see. I think we have everything we need. Okay, good. Let's try the next one. Here, I'm going to jump to x squared minus 4. Okay. Same exact rules apply. I want you to give this a try. Graph, first you need to graph x squared minus 4. And that's going to look like this here, uh, minus 4. I'm just going to really do a, just a really sketchy sketch of this, OK? OK. Now, here I've got my x-intercepts at 2 and negative 2. So my vertical asymptotes are going to be here, I'll do the answer in blue this time, just because I kept 
the red pen in my hand. So there's my vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2, x equals 2. And my invariant points are when x equal no, sorry, y equals 1 and y equals negative 1. So uh, the two things that you're going to solve are 1 equals x squared minus 4 and negative 1 equals x squared minus 4. So solve them for x. You're going to get x equals plus or minus root 5 for this one here. And you're going to get x equals plus or minus root 3 for this side here. Okay, then that's your points right there and there and there and there. And so you draw your uh, lines going like that. And this kind of tells you which quadrant you're going to be in. Okay, and now this is negative 4, so then this is going to be at negative 1 quarter. And then we go through those invariant points. Okay, do a better job on this side than I did. Oops, and that go through that invariant point. And this invariant point, these are the root 5 guys. And in here, those are the root 3s. Okay, so there you have it. Label this a little bit better than I did. Uh, my kid is knocking on the door, so I've got to go unlock the door. Uh, but um, I want you to try the other two examples in the notes and bring them to class. We'll have a look at it and make sure you do some of these questions, okay? See you later.